Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Hey, the, were you with us yesterday? If you were not, we are this week listening to a sermon that meant so much to me because it's full of biblical information, a lot from the 23rd Psalm, on how to get through suffering and to do it well. That's what our pastor, Stacy Wood, was speaking on about a month ago. And it was so good, I knew that I wanted to hear it again, let alone those of you who have not heard it at all. So those of you who have not heard it at all, then it's going to be a blessing in your life. I wouldn't do this if I didn't think that it's so valuable for you, my friends. Take notes, make your key points, have it on one piece of paper that when it's over, you can put it maybe by your phone or by your computer. And when you get bad news or harsh news on any topic, you can refer to it. Because God, our loving Father, does not want you to go through this. And, and, and of course, the verse that she's focusing on, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you, Lord, are with me. And I want you to be convinced of that fact. Let's go back and listen to what Stacy has for us today. My friend, there's going to come a day where the empire that we've built and the legacy that we've left in the power of our own self-sufficiency, it will be insufficient to meet the greatest needs of our soul. In the Bible, it says that there is a way that seems right to man. It, it makes sense to us, it, it feels good, but in the end, it leads to death. Broad is the road that leads to death and destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life and only a few people find it. And Jesus is inviting us into this narrow road because what ha what's happened to us, my, what I wanna propose to you today is that these idols that we have built to our own self-sufficiency, these idols that we've built to our own independence and our ability, our high capacity to get it done in our own strength, they're making us look real good, real confident, well-dressed on the road to destruction. But there's a better way. There's a better invitation for us today. And the invitation is to acknowledge our full and utter dependence on Jesus. Our full and utter dependence upon Jesus. To unpack this today, I would love for us to spend some time in John chapter 15, a very familiar passage where Jesus talks about how he's the vine and we're the branches. And in this passage, it's right before Jesus goes to the cross, literally the night before. He's got his closest disciples around him and he's giving them this last teaching, like guys, this is what I want you to remember. See, there's a sense of urgency in Jesus's voice here because he knows what they're about to be up against. He knows the crisis that they're going to walk through. He knows that he's not always going to be with them in bodily form. And so he's saying, hey guys, I wanna give you some information, some teaching that's really gonna help you. If you can just stay connected to me, if you could remain in me, then I'm gonna help you live the kind of life that you wanna live. So as we read through this passage together, I hope you can hear it with fresh ears. And I want you to notice how many times Jesus gives the instruction, remain. Every time you see that little word, just highlight it or underline it, remain in me. So John chapter 15, starting in verse four, Jesus says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. 
If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. This image of a vine and a vineyard would have been a very common sight in those days. But now that we live in urban cities and in suburbia, we don't interact with vineyards quite as often. But if you look at this picture of of a vineyard, of a vine and its branches, you can see that the vine is thick. It's like really woody and it has roots that go down into the soil system. And then from that vine come all of these little branches that sprout off and that's where the fruit grows. Now that vine is strong and it has its own source of sustenance, but those branches are dependent upon the vine for all of its nutrition. It's the source of life that vine is for the branches. If a branch were to get cut off from the vine, the vine's gonna be fine, right? It's got its own source and its own source of nutrition and source of life. But if that vine that, or that branch that got cut off, it's gonna quickly wither and die. Now, if that branch will stay connected to the vine, the, the most natural thing in the world is for that branch to bear fruit over and over again. Every year, that branch can bear more fruit. But if that branch gets cut off, it never has a chance of bearing fruit again. It might've been fruitful at one point, but never again. And I wonder if you know anyone like that, whose life feels like that. Like at one point in their life, it seemed like their life was really fruitful. It bore a lot of fruit, but, but now it just feels like they're withering. They're withering on the, on the vine, they're, they're cut off. And I, I kind of wonder if any of you feel that way. Like at one point you were well connected to Jesus, the source of life and you were fruitful and life, was, life felt different, but somehow life happened and you got disconnected and now it feels like you're kind of dying on the inside. And maybe even you have everybody else fooled because, because you're still successful in life. And, and so it looks like your life is bearing fruit, but how many people know you can be successful but not fruitful? It's different. You you can look like you have it together, but actually you know on the inside that you're withering up, that you're dying, that there's no source of life that's flowing through you because successfulness and fruitfulness, they're not the same thing. There's a really successful actor, American actor by the name of Jim Carrey, and he is uh, famously said this one time. He said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so that they can see it's not the answer. Successful does not equal fruitful, but it can be tricky because sometimes they look the same. Sometimes the success in someone's life makes us look at their life and be like, oh wow, look how amazing they're doing. They're thriving in life, but it's kind of like fake fruit. You guys ever had fake fruit on display in your house, like lemons or grapes or something? And from a distance, it's kind of deceiving. It it looks real. I had these sitting out on the counter last night and Karis came up, she thought she was gonna eat some. She got close and she was like, oh, those are fake. Those aren't real. There's nothing nutritious. There's nothing pleasurable about this to eat. And, and, but it looks, it's deceivingly it, uh, real, the way that it looks. And it's like success. The, the success in our life can make us look as if our life is so fruitful, like we're just thriving in life. But all we've actually done is we've just taped some fake fruit on dead branches and we've called it fruit. But you know in your heart when you're dying on the inside, there's no life running through you. And God wants you to live a life that's full of rich fruit, fruit that satisfies. And we're gonna talk about the difference between that human achievement and a fruitful life. I was, as I was studying this passage, one thing that really struck me was Jesus' audacious claim in verse five, where he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. 